Hi there, so this is the second part of a video series on using encrypted unassigned disks with an unraid server. This second part is going to go into some more advanced techniques. So if that sounds interesting, let's get started. OK, so here we are with part two of unassigned encrypted disks and we're going to be moving on to some advanced things that we can do. Now, if you haven't watched the first part of the video, then please do that as this video assumes that you have. So what are we going to be covering in this video? Well, firstly, how to quickly and easily mount an unassigned encrypted disk on a server which doesn't have an encrypted array. So basically just following on from the last video. And two, how to easily mount multiple unassigned encrypted disks, even if they have different encryption keys for each disk. And three, auto mounting unassigned encrypted disks. Again, even if these disks have different encryption keys for each one. And finally, how to create an unassigned encrypted disk which has multiple partitions. Now, like I said in the first video, a note to you guys watching this in the future. Because I don't know about the future, and as Doc Brown says... We've already agreed that having information about the future can be extremely dangerous. Even if your intentions are good, it can backfire drastically. So I'm not sure what it's like for you in the future. But for us here in the old days, September 2019, this is how we had to do this. You future guys may well have the tools built into Unraid that will do some or all of what's discussed here. So check the description. If things have changed, I will link to the info or a new video on what's changed or new methods. OK, so let's get started and look at mounting an encrypted unassigned disk. OK, so in the first video, we left off where we just mounted this encrypted unassigned disk. Now, when we put in the passphrase into Unraid, it creates a key file from that passphrase. And we can see the key file if we click onto Terminal and let's list the files by typing ls and you can see here this is the file that's created called key file so let's have a look inside of that and to do that we can type cat space and then key file and inside the key file is the passphrase that I made the really secure one called password so let's quickly unmount this disk here so now the disk is unmounted so now let's go back to terminal and I'm going to delete the key file. So I'm going to delete it just by typing rm then key file. And we can see it's gone. And so now if I try and mount this, because the key file's not there, it's not going to happen. So the easiest way to mount an encrypted unassigned disk is to open up terminal and create the key file. And to do that, all we need to do is type echo space and we need to type hyphen n. Now what this switch does is it makes it that it doesn't create a new line at the end. And the echo command is pretty much similar to like print. We can just kind of print some text inside of a file. So we want to type in our passphrase in speech marks and if you remember mine was password then space then we need to put a chevron. Now when we put a single chevron, if the file already exists, it will clear it all out and just start again. So we want to just type now the name of the file, which is always going to be key file and hit enter. So now if we list the files, there's our key file and let's have a look inside of it again. And we can see it's exactly the same as it was consisting of the word password. And because I'd used the hyphen N, there's no new line and so that's why we can see here root at backup coming straight after the passphrase because there's no new line. So anyway, let's close this and now we should be able to mount this without any problem at all. OK, easy. So this method's really quick. You only have to type one line. You don't have to stop the array and there's no chance that you can accidentally format that cache drive. OK, so now let's move on to looking at mounting multiple encrypted disks when they've got different key files. So now let's remove this encrypted disk from this server and pop it into the main server. OK, so on this server, I've got an encrypted array and the array is mounted. And for unassigned disk, I've got this unassigned encrypted disk. 
And this one's actually got two partitions here and we'll be looking at how to do that later. And here's the one that I've just put in from the other server. Now I can click mount on this one here and this encrypted drive is using the same passphrase as my main array. So if I click onto mount, then it mounts absolutely fine. But this encrypted drive isn't using the same passphrase. So when I click onto mount, I can't mount this drive. So what to do? So all I need to do is again open terminal and I'm just going to alter the key file. So I know that the passphrase for this drive is password. So again, I'm going to type echo and hyphen M space and then in speech marks password and space and the single chevron. So it overwrites everything that's in the existing key file at the moment and the name of the file. And I'll just check that's been done. OK, so there we are. The key files now changed. So let's close terminal and now try and mount this drive again. OK, so there we are. This drive's now mounted correctly because when we click mount, it just looked for the key file that was already here. And so because we had changed it, we were now able to mount it. So obviously, if we were to unmount this one now and then try and remount it, then we're not going to be able to mount this drive because we've changed the key file. So the key file for this drive is now going to be wrong. So all we need to do is basically just open back up terminal and change the key file back to the correct one for this drive. Now, of course, this isn't my real passphrase as I don't want to show it. But with the magic of editing, I will actually put the correct one in off camera. So let's cap the file and have a look inside. And we can see it's changed. So with that done, let's close terminal. So now I'm able to mount this drive again. And so once the drive's mounted, it will stay mounted until either the server's rebooted or you click on unmount. So that's how we can have multiple encrypted drives with different passphrases mounted on our server. OK, so now let's move on to auto mounting on assigned encrypted disks. OK, so when I say auto mounting, it's kind of auto mounting, but not auto mounting when the array starts. Although we can actually auto mount on array start one encrypted unassigned device. But what I mean by auto mounting is when we press mount, we don't have to put in any passphrase. So let's unmount this drive here and I'm going to open up terminal and I'm going to delete the key file. OK, so when I try and mount the disk, it's not going to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to edit a script here. So go across to the right hand side and click on this icon here and click on this button default script. And now we want to scroll down until we come to this bit error mount. Now you see where it says do your stuff here. Well, underneath there, we're going to type our line echo hyphen n, then the passphrase chevron. And now this time for the location forward slash root forward slash key file. OK, and I'm also going to change this here the notification where it says error mounting device. I'm going to put a full stop and now key file added. Please try again and then click on to save and done. So now let's click on the mount button here. And now we get the error coming here. It says error mounting device key file added. Please try again. So let's try again. And there we are. We've got the drive mounted. So no need to make a manual key file. Now having a script for this disk can be useful because if we unmount this disk and remove it from the server. And now let's delete the key file to simulate the server being rebooted. So now when we plug the drive back in, we're going to be able to click on to mount. We're going to get our error message and click mount again and the drive will mount because unassigned devices remembers the disk because that script is saved with the ID number of the drive. So it's pretty useful. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking it's not really very secure to keep the passphrase for an encrypted disk in a script that's quite easily accessible. And you'd be right. So as I've got an encrypted array here, if I was to store a script on the encrypted array, then that can't be got to unless the server started up. And so that's a lot more secure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to shares. I'm going to create a new share. I'm just going to call it key. And I'm going to click done. And I'm going to go back to the main page and I'm going to open a terminal window. And we're going to do a little bit of command line work here. 
I'm going to type touch, which will create a file, then forward slash MNT, forward slash user, which is where the shares are, forward slash key, and then forward slash, let's call it drive one, and hit enter. So now I'm going to edit the file. So I'm going to type nano, forward slash, then again, forward slash MNT, forward slash user, forward slash key, and the name of the file. So at the top, we're going to type hashtag exclamation forward slash bin forward slash bash. And now we're going to type echo hyphen n. Then our passphrase chevron forward slash root forward slash key file. So now let's press control and O to write out and enter and control X to exit nano. So now we can close the terminal window and now let's go and edit our script. So let's scroll down to where it says error mount again and let's delete this line here, the one we put in earlier. Now this time we're going to call up that script. So we're going to put in bash forward slash MNT forward slash user forward slash key or the name of your share forward slash drive one and click save and done. So now let's try and mount the drive. And again, as expected, we get the error message. So let's mount again. And the drive's mounted correctly. So the good thing about calling the other script from within this script, because that script sits on the encrypted array, so it's impossible to read that script and therefore find out what the encryption key is for this drive when the server's actually shut down. Okay, so a minute ago, I was talking about auto-mounting an unassigned encrypted disk when the array starts. And I said that you can only automatically start one at the array start. Now you can see here that this disk here, I've got this set here to auto-mount. And because this disk uses the same key as my array does, when the array started, the unassigned disk will auto-mount. Now when my array starts, I don't actually have to put in a passphrase, it will auto-mount itself. And you can see how I did that in this video here. So if you make a script in your Go file, so when your server starts up, it puts in the key file for an encrypted disk, then you can have as many encrypted unassigned disks start up as you like, so long as they all share that same key. So now let's look at creating encrypted disks with multiple partitions. Well, for that, that'll be in the third part of the series, where we'll also be looking at making and formatting encrypted disks right from the command line. Well, I really hope you enjoyed this video, and as I always ask, please hit the like button if you did. And if you're not a subscriber, then please feel welcome to subscribe. And a really big thanks to all of my Patreons and supporters out there, without whom these videos would just not be possible. And if you'd like to join this great bunch of people and also support the channel, then please see the links in the description. Well, as it's the end of this video, it's time for me to go. But whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you in the next video.